hunger striking detainees at Guantanamo Bay claim they're being denied access to their clients. The situation is said to be life threatening as more than 100 captives have reportedly been starving themselves now for a month and a half. U.S. officials have downplayed the allegations, though, and the scale of the crisis. And while uh, President Obama has still not kept his promise to close the detention center, the military is now asking for money to upgrade the facility. Ghana Chichikam has more. A spokesperson for Guantanamo, Robert Duran, responded to RT's inquiry. Here's what he writes. As of Friday, the 22nd of March 2013, we have 26 hunger strikers, with eight receiving enteral feeds. This is an increase from Thursday, which was 25 and 8. We have two detainees in the detainee hospital for rehydration and observation on enteral feed. Last time Robert Duran got back to us was last week, also on Friday, saying there were 14 detainees who refused all food, although defense attorneys had been saying there were many more. Well, now Robert Duran says there are 26. We cannot independently verify these numbers or any of this, so we have to rely on the response that we get from the officials and the detainees' lawyers. And here's the latest from the attorneys. Apparently, they are now denied direct access to their clients in Guantanamo. Attorneys say they had a visit scheduled for early next week with one of the clients who lost 30 pounds. That's almost 14 kilograms since the strike began at the beginning of February. That visit was approved by the military, but the lawyers say they've just been informed by the authorities that they cannot visit the client because the military flight scheduled for next week was cancelled. Also, most recently, the Navy decided uh, to discontinue commercial flights uh, to the camp. So attorneys are really struggling to find out the true extent of what's happening in Guantanamo now. And not just the attorneys, but we journalists as well. I spoke with a lawyer who was denied access to her client in Guantanamo this week. She told me there is a sense among defense attorneys that they're being deliberately ignored by the authorities. It's so frustrating. There is nothing that we can do. We have sent emails to the uh, to the Department of Defense, to the commander of Guantanamo Bay, asking them to meet with us, to talk to us about the detainees' conditions. We have heard no response. So there is a sense of helplessness among the attorneys as well. A few months ago, the State Department shut down the office that was working to close the prison. And on top of it, the U.S. Southern Command, and that's the command that oversees Guantanamo, has just requested $49 million to build a new prison building at Guantanamo Bay for quote-unquote special detainees, on top of other renovations it says are necessary since Washington decided to keep it open indefinitely. The military said the potential taxpayer bill for upgrading the deteriorating facilities would be uh, almost $196 million. And all of this effectively means that the detainees are stuck in this legal limbo indefinitely. Ghana Chichikan there. Well, let's speak now with Lieutenant Colonel Barry Wingard. He's a U.S. military attorney who advocates for Guantanamo detainees. Sir, thank you for taking the time to be with us. Uh, I understand you do have access to your clients in, in Guantanamo, apparently. When's the last time you saw them and what, what state were they in? The last time that I saw my clients was between 20, the 25th of February and the 8th of March. I visited with them multiple times. I was shocked at the condition that they're in. In fact, we were the first people that broke the story that the hunger strike had began uh, February the 6th or 7th, around that time frame, and had continued on. My client at that time had lost 26 pounds, and at this point, it's uh, official that he has lost almost 40, 40 pounds, one third of his body weight from 147 pounds. How long can the you hunger go on strike like that, is then? still ongoing. Well, I, I can imagine that we're getting near to the end where something serious is going to happen. I mean, the administration down in Guantanamo Bay initially denied the report that the hunger strike was occurring. They then said that it was 7, then 14, then 21. Then they said that it wasn't the largest hunger strike in history. Then they came out and said it's 24, 25, and today 26. So the story's getting more and more accurate as we go. But we're running out of time, as you point out. Do you think it really will take that? Well, it, I'm here to tell you that after 11 and a half years, these men that live in animal cages in America's offshore prison in Guantanamo Bay, they ask for justice. They've been there 11 and a half years. 90% of them have no charges. I can tell you, having looked at my clients' cases, they will never get a trial based upon the evidence that's against them. So if their home countries are not willing to intervene and do something, I don't see it coming from Washington. Washington seems to take the position that we don't have the time to deal with these 166 condemned men in, in our How, offshore prison. How's Washington going to deal with the PR, if you like, if somebody does die? 
Well, I mean, you're going to have to answer that as far as a political question. I'm a lawyer. I'm here to look at the facts and to tell you that I've reviewed these cases, and I'm here to tell you that these guys will never get trials. If they're never getting trials, then we have to go by what the president has said in March of 2011 when he said indefinite detention will be implemented in Guantanamo Bay and will be the law of the United States. Forty-eight men will be condemned to die, never having given a trial or given an opportunity to defend themselves. They are essentially condemned dead men that just happen to breathe. For the people you've spoken to there, including your client, uh, what was their mindset? Is it the same maybe when they started this uh, 45, 46 days ago as it is now? I mean, did they think they would have to maybe take this through to the bitter end or not? Or did they think something would give beforehand? Well, I, I can't speak for what every man down there thought, but what I can tell you is the vast majority of people in Guantanamo Bay are cleared for release. They're cleared to go home. The United States acknowledges that they've committed no crime, but yet we still continue to house them in a penal colony in Guantanamo Bay. Imagine, imagine if the situation were, were, were reversed and the United States had 166 citizens held in some other country's offshore prison. I don't want to go into what happened in the early years as far as enhanced interrogation, but the situation isn't getting better. It, these men have figured out that probably the only way for them to go home, cleared or not, is in a, in a wooden box. Lieutenant. I mean, seven proceedings in... in Lieutenant ahead. Colonel Sorda, but we've only got literally about 15 seconds. Do you take any comfort at all in, in this uh, U.S. military plan now to spend $49 million upgrading the facility, making it apparently more comfortable for the inmates? Well, this is not about soccer fields or food or anything else. This is about justice and freedom. This is a bigger concept. This is what the United States stands for, not more servings of food and not more soccer fields to play on. This is a matter of getting these men home or giving them trials, and that's the answer. Live from Washington, Lieutenant Colonel Barry Wingard, U.S. military attorney advocating for Guantanamo detainees. Thank you very much. Much appreciated.